Welcome, everybody, to Beauty, Cocktails, and Girl Talk. We have an amazing guest today, Brianne Davis. She is dropping a book February 12th, and it's all about sex and love addiction. She's super intriguing, super spicy. I know you're going to love it, so stick around. Right, and I want to ask you, what is one beauty product that you cannot live without? Oh my God, I'm so glad you asked this because I actually wrote about it in the book. I actually mentioned a ton of products throughout the book because the character Roxanne also loves beauty, but yeah. it's Georgiana lip liner. It's oh, that it one is. you get at Walgreens. It's $2.99 and it's called Rockin' wait, uh, Rock and Roll, the best lip liner ever it's like the most natural lip liner and every time I buy it I buy like 10 of them yeah oh my <laughs> god I gotta check that out oh my gosh the best it's the it's I'm like so who- beauty for the win <laughs> wow <laughs> by the way I mean, yeah. somebody else is here did you was your publicist coming or something or I think she was just gonna come on and just see if we were okay but she said it, she probably wasn't gonna stay on so I don't think it I don't know oh okay oh she just I saw oh hold on the more the merrier yeah right <laughs> girl talk <laughs> oh there's oh no yeah oh yeah Be- becca i just i think she's seen if we're okay hey hi hey becca hello how are you good good how are you doing i'm doing well well, I think we're started, right? Are we starting? We started, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's okay. do it. I got another question for you. This is a fun one. Okay. <laughs> if you could quarantine with anyone, living or dead for 24 hours, who would it be? What would you guys do? And what would your cocktail of choice be? Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, my God. I don't know who that would be. I mean, I, I think cheesily or cheesy I would pick my husband to quarantine yeah. with because he and I are just we work so well together we've been together for 16 years and being quarantined with a toddler and our businesses and stuff and cocktail I would probably have a Kira Royale and he mm-hmm. would have nothing because he's 32 years sober so that oh, would be Oh, congratulations. That's so congratulations exciting. to well, him. Beautiful. I I know. What would be the non-alcoholic drink? Because it doesn't have to be. Um, oh. He would probably get like a mojito without the alcohol because he oh, loves so like good. and all that. Yeah. Right, nice. That was so refreshing. I love mm-hmm. me a mojito. Mm. 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 Uh, so, so uh, Brianne, if you... If, if COVID wasn't happening, what would be your ideal girls' night in or girls' night out? Mm. Oh, yeah. So I would say we would go to a hotel. There's one in Pasadena, the Langdon Hotel in Pasadena. And I would go with my girlfriend, Rachel, and we would have like a spa day because we're both moms of kids and we would literally lay in bed and get room service and go to the spa and that's it like that would be just lay in bed and watch like a movie that would be my girl's night out it's really like <laughs> lame but that just sounds amazing right now that yeah that's so as a 30 year old lady now that sounds amazing to me like gone are my club days I don't want none of that <laughs> that sounds brilliant. I want to lay in bed and have things done to beautify my skin. <laughs> right? And then food, delicious, expensive food brought in with dessert and a glass of wine. And you're with your best girlfriend. And you guys talk about the Real Housewives and just eat and lay and <laughs> wear masks. <Yeah. laughs> oh my God, all I want to do now. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yep. Anytime Shruti and I go somewhere, eating is the main, is the main activity. Yes. 
Really? Right. Because I don't understand those people that do not plan their meals. Like when I drive down the street and I see a restaurant, I yelp it. And I'm like, is that something I should try? And I plan my meal before I have it. I don't understand those people that are like, I just don't want to eat. Like, I just don't really care about food. <laughs> I almost want to slap them. Like, I'm like, I would whatever. Try, there's something wrong if you, you don't, uh, so yeah, was- you don't want to eat. There's something wrong. I know some, this one person told me that she wishes she could just take a pill and it keeps her full because she just doesn't enjoy eating. And I just did it. I was like, we can't be friends because that's like all my yeah. day is thinking about. And that Ellie is so unsatisfying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are so inspiring and outspoken and we admire your courage when it comes to talking about topics that people can easily shy away from. Um, congratulations on your book, Secret Life of Hollywood, Sex and Love Addict, uh, would be available on February 12th. Is that correct? Yep. Mm-hmm. Valentine's Day weekend. So right. <laughs> And that's going to be um, available digitally and uh, in print? Yes. Wonderful. And- Here's a little preview. Oh wow! I, I love like that. A little X over the over the nip. <laughs> I'm feeling <Yeah>. that. <laughs> so, first off, what inspired you to write this book? Um, and can you share a story where you faced a challenge in this area and what you're learning about yourself from the experience? Yeah, I mean, I've said before, I never wanted to write a book. I was not interested in writing. I'm dyslexic. I have ADHD. Um, I'm an actor. I just like people to give me the lines and I'll just read them. So when my husband suggested I take this writing class a year and a half ago, I was like, what are you talking about? Leave me alone. Like, I just want to like go to work on set and, you know, and he kept mentioning it. And I said, fine, I'll take it. Leave me alone. I'll take it. And the book came out of me in 45 days. It just, the first draft just spilled out of me. Yeah. And I just hit my 10 years of recovery in Sex and Love Addicts Anonymous. And all these stories came out of me. And it was going to be a memoir. But when I kept writing it, I kept getting all these visions and scenes and my dreams and, and other people's stories coming in. And I just kept adding to them. And all of a sudden the character popped into my head, this other woman that's similar to me, but is not me. She, the stories are probably like 50, 60% mine. And the other ones are my imagination or other people's stories. So I was sitting being like, who's this person then if she's not me Mm -hmm. and the song for the police Roxanne came on and it was like, Oh my God, that is her name. Roxanne, you know, So I gave her the name Roxanne. And what I say is everybody has a little Roxanne in them. Everybody does things that are secrets, are shameful. And I really just wanted to help people understand this disease of sex and love addiction, that it's very deadly. It's very serious. More people are in jail from sex and love addiction than any other disease. More people are murdered over love triangles. I mean, just watch Dateline there. It's literally the cause of death is, you know, love and sex obsession. And being in the program now for 11 years and 11 years of recovery, I just really want to educate people in a way that feels entertaining, because I am an entertainer. So when I was writing it, these 10 rules came up about how Roxanne for the first year in the program, you know, finds her serenity and peace. And one of the stories I love, well, there's so many stories I love. There's, you know, a great uh, CEO being with a CEO that's in a wheelchair, love scene that's amazing. And then there's a threesome, well, let's say a a botch threesome at the Bel Air Hotel or Hotel Bel Air and with Superstar and Cool Girl, I gave everyone different names so I cannot get sued. You will never mm. know who I'm talking about. You will have to try to guess. And <laughs> my, my favorite scene is at the beginning of the book. It opens up with Roxanne being confronted by two boyfriends, one living in New York and one living in Atlanta. 
And I will say that that happened to me. And she definitely the situation of her getting out of getting confronted and (laughs) having to apologize and all that is hilarious. And it's like, you want to crawl out of your skin for her. And it's also heartbreaking. So I just really want to educate people, but also entertain them while they read this book. It sounds like spicy and steamy. Is it like has an erotica vibe to it? Yeah, I gave it to a couple of my producer friends and they said, this huge director said, when I'm reading it, I'm, it's like titillating and like, kind of sexy but then there's a part of you that feels gross that you're Mm -hmm. thinking like that because it's an addiction and she's in her disease so it's like this weird and you'll see the ups and downs you know she has a couple slips that are really horrible but I just feel like every time I give it to somebody they always are like oh my god I do that oh my god someone I know does that I learned something. Mm -hmm. I saw myself in this. And I just really want people to like blow open the doors of this addiction. There's no shame that we all have done things we're not proud of as Mm -hmm. long as you you know, take responsibility for them. And recovery is not a straight line for any addiction, anybody recovering, you know, there's bumps on the road. It's, it's up and down. And uh, the the most important thing is to just pick yourself up and keep going, you know, not dwell on (laughs) the mistake or the relapse or anything like that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's gnarly. And to be addicted to people, Mm -hmm. if you guys, if you, if you don't understand this addiction, just it's like an alcoholic is addicted to the bottle. Um, A sex and love addict is addicted to a person. They pick unavailable men. They cheat, you know, they intrigue, they flirt, they DM, they swipe left and swipe right. Always looking for the perfect partner. And my whole message is, the perfect partner is in the mirror. It's you. Self-love is the most important. And that is what this program and having this disease has taught me that I live and I die by myself. Like Mm. if you don't like the person that you are at the end of your life, I didn't want to see myself at the end of my life, never be fully committed to another person, never fully loving myself because this disease is based on low self-worth, fear of abandonment, fear of intimacy, fear of getting hurt. And I was just sick and tired of having one foot in and one foot out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. I'm, I'm like a little speechless right now. I'm like listening to you and I'm like, oh my God, this is so, like, you have so much wisdom and the novel, it sounds so exciting and it just sounds so raw and authentic. And, you know, I believe that people should share their stories because you never know whose life you're going to touch just by sharing your story where someone else can say, Oh my gosh, I'm not alone. Yeah. So, you know, with that being said with someone who's dealing with this, with love addiction or sex addiction, what would be your advice to them? Well, the main thing I would say is open up, talk to somebody because before I, you know, went to a therapist, I, we always thought I was so broken and alone. I thought I was missing that gene that could fully commit to my boyfriend. Like I was always kind of just flirting and, and I didn't realize how damaging that was because flirting is like giving your energy off and it's just air. It doesn't mean anything. And I just want people to know that you have to talk to somebody. You have to put words to how you're feeling Mm -hmm. to say, I don't know what's wrong with me. Like, why do I keep doing this over and over again? I say you can put a bag over someone's head. It didn't matter who they were. It's just what they mirrored for me. And then I'm talking about friends. I realize I use my friends. I realize I use family members. It's like, for instance, if I was having a bad day, I would call a friend and leave her on the phone for 30 minutes, like talking her ear off. And then I realized when I got off with her, I still didn't feel better. And I would pick up the phone and do it to another friend. And it was just a moment like, wow, you are so empty inside that you keep using other people to fill you. So I would say if that's something you do, there are these 40 questions. It's self-diagnosed on Sex and Love Addicts Anonymous. You can go and type in 40 self-diagnosed question questionnaire and you can fill them out. And they say if you get five or more yeses that you might look into the program. But I want to say like, 
I got 38 out of 40. I knew I had a problem and I'm so grateful. And I'm not, you know, sex and love addicts anonymous might not work for everybody, but it worked for me. And I'm just trying to share my experience, strength and hope. So others know that they're not alone. If you're a chronic cheater, you're going to be doing that the rest of your life. It's not going to go away when you find the perfect partner. There is no perfect partner. If you keep picking that unavailable man that doesn't return your calls, that leaves you hanging, that doesn't show up for you, you're going to keep doing that until you stop, go get some help, see why you keep doing it and what internally your pattern is. And then it's bringing back relationships in a healthy way. That's what it is. And it's the best thing I've ever done for myself. Yeah, absolutely. And breaking down your, your learning. So do you think because you answered these questions, these 40 questions, do you find and you wrote a book, do you find that journaling can be therapeutic or writing stuff out and like, kind of getting it out of your subconscious, like what's stored in your subconscious? Yeah. I mean, I wrote pages. I mean, even just doing the step work, you're writing, you know, your feelings. And I would have moments where my, my sponsor would say, go and write it out and have like, get it out. And, and she would say, you know, write how angry you are at God for giving you this, write, you know, all the things you never said to your parents. And I did so much free form writing because there's something also about getting it out of your system. And my therapist said something that really, really helped me, helped me grieve the loss of my old self and step into my new self because it is a loss. It's a death of a person. And she said, when you grieve the loss of something, like you have to imagine yourself like digging through your shit because we keep eternal, you know, shit keeps getting piled on to get to our goals. And that's what I did. I dug through my shit. I looked at why I was doing the things I was doing. I looked at all like the disappointment of my childhood. And it's all in the book, all that it's chapter five, six, and seven are brutal for me to edit. Because every time I did, I wanted to like, just throw it against the wall. And like, oh, because it was every time I edit, I would dredge up all that stuff over and over again. No, that's so it's so inspiring. And you know, just someone being aware of their own learnings, which I think people shy away from, or they're fearful of it because it's easier to stay complacent. Like, honestly, it is for people that are like, okay, I'm in my comfort zone. I feel safe here. I don't want to educate myself on this. But like, we all have traits, which even there was this one quote on Instagram that was like, be thankful for your triggers and those people that kind of provoke you because they're sent as your healer is for you to heal yourself. So that I think, I think if people just got in touch with, you know, like I'm not perfect or I just need to work on this. What do I need to work on? Really get to know themselves because healing is not bubble baths. It's not like, Oh, I'm going to go get a facial. It's can be an ugly process where it's like, you're going through anger. You're going through resentment. You're crying, but that's how you're going to get it out and move on to your new self. You know, I mean, my withdrawal and a lot of people's withdrawal through this program, especially is brutal. It was nine months. I cried every day for nine months. I went to therapy twice a week. I went to four meetings a week. I was crawling at the carpet. I even had one a crying session at home where I was sitting on the bed. I, my mouth was open. Like I couldn't, my throat was closing up. I was all this pain, I was just like bawling, couldn't stop. And I looked at the Mm -hmm. clock and 45 minutes had passed. It was like an exorcism of all this hurt and pain. And you cannot heal and you cannot change unless you walk through the darkness. And you have to be willing to just say, I'm going to feel all the feelings and let it be what it is. And know that this too shall pass. It will pass. And as an addict, we don't want to feel (laughs) <laughs> anything other than euphoria. Yeah. So if you're struggling, if someone's struggling out there, they just have to be willing to, to go through the shit to get to the good. Yeah. Thank you so much for like sharing all of that. Like I feel so empowered just listening to you and you know, you just being your authentic self. It's really beautiful. Thank you. 
Um, so switch gears a little bit. Well, still on the same topic. Uh, tell us about your podcast. You know, I know that it, you guys cover taboo topics. So tell us about it. Okay. So after I started writing the book and I, and I did an article for Huff Post and I pretty much outed myself with my disease, I got all these DMs and emails about people saying how much it helped them. And a, a month later, I woke up in the middle of the night at 3 a.m. And it was like Secret Life Podcast. They People tell me their secrets and I'll tell them mine. And it was this way of during the pandemic, especially pe- so many people were suffering. And I saw in my meetings on Zoom, so many people suffering. And my husband and I, you know, our whole life now is to be of service and give back to other people what we have gotten. That's how you stay sober yeah. in the 12 step program. So I reached out to a couple friends. I got a mic. I said, can I just interview you and you tell me your secret will change your name. And it just blew up from there. I, we've released 32 episodes um, and we have 89 still already in the can. We have enough for two and a half years. And what we want to do is blow open the doors. Bless you for everybody, <laughs> for everybody's secrets, because there's something about secrets kill us. And when you let them out and you're of service to the listener, because it's not about me or my guest, it's about the listener that doesn't have a voice. Yeah. When you do that, it's the best feeling in the whole world. So we have every okay. topic from suicide, sh- shooting someone in the shot shotgun in her chest and surviving we have going to an institution every addiction you can imagine um you know a guy overeating or being anorexic to I mean everything sexual anorexia the hardest one for me was using abortions as a form of birth control that one was really hard for me to record you know because but here's the beautiful thing everything she went through I went through and no one's ever alone. So that's why I do. I love doing what I do because it makes me be of service to others. And it, it, it makes me become more vulnerable. Oh my gosh. I love it. And I love the concept that's so unique, especially because, you know, like you're not saying their name and they get to just say what they want to say. What's the, you know, it's, it's hard not to, keeping in a secret and not being able to share it with like anybody even mm-hmm. the people closest to you. So you're right. Like just saying it and being able to tell someone and changing their name. That's like the best of both worlds. Cause you get it out and mm-hmm. you can keep your, keep it anonymous. Yeah. It's a safe place. I want to make it a safe place for the listeners, a safe place for my guests. You know, I've had already three guests ask me to get rid of their episode cause they are having, they don't want it released. And I said, this is your journey to tell I and I got rid of them you know it's not yeah. for me to decide what people share but I have to tell you the ones that were nervous about their episodes coming out there was so much healing from them especially um you know uh, this one she lost her baby you know re- it was really traumatic but a part of her was her secret was she was happy she had the miscarriage because she didn't want to be in the relationship anymore. And she was holding on so much guilt and shame for so many years. And the growth she had after she put words to it and people reached out and, you know, to me and I let her know, like, you're really helping others. Other women have felt the same way. It's about healing and stepping into, you know, letting go of that shame, letting go of the secret and that you're not alone again. Yeah. <laughs> love it oh I'm definitely going to be listing um so also I want to talk to you about your projects because you're an actor you're a director you're a producer and you've been on you know lots of shows and you produce your own projects so tell us what in that realm what's next for you well what's next the movie Deadwater I did just came out so I was promoting that and uh, it's funny, Secret Life of a Celebrity Surrogate I did for a lifetime. And it's so funny because it wasn't called Secret Life. And so I've kind of become this secret life person I, that just came out on Lifetime. And it was such a great character. Her name's Ava. And she was like the best character ever. And Lucifer just came out. I was on Lucifer. Um, 
but yeah, we're pitching shows right now. I'm already on the second book. There's four books for Secret Life that I already have mapped out. So right now we're doing that. And with the pandemic, waiting for our, our business to get back. Um, yes, so, yeah. I know. I'm quarantining. <laughs> Yeah, we're pretty much stuck right now inside with our toddler. He's almost three. And yeah, it's just me and my husband and my toddler. And we're trying to like get work done and finish writing. And we just finished a pilot. So yeah, it's busy. But so you wrote a pilot. Yeah, we wrote we wrote a pilot for the book. We have interest in making it a TV series. So my husband and I wrote together that was our first project we wrote together it's called secret life um so we'll see I mean who knows I'm just going with the flow guys like I'm yeah. just I just I'm like okay that's what's supposed to be here I love that I love that I mean all of it sounds so exciting and you're doing what especially what you can with the quarantine the pandemic and now's the time to be creative or focus on your creative projects because like otherwise we're working and we're like machines right like we wake up mm-hmm. we brush our teeth got to take care of the kids got to go to work now is the time to spend time with your loved ones to focus on all your projects you know yeah so uh, I'm sure that think- creativity. Mm. what there you, <laughs> there you are uh, nurturing that creativity I love it oh you're breaking up a little can you hear her my breakup, uh, Naomi. Are you here? I can hear. I can hear you guys. Is okay, it? perfect. Uh, yeah, you wanna, I'm here. You wanna um uh just the mantra question. Monitor question. Oh yes. Uh, what is your mantra that you live by daily? Oh my gosh, that's a good one. Um, well, I feel like I have adopted the one of let go and let God like we just try to like say like go and let God whatever comes and God for us is very spiritual it's the universe it's higher power um our quote for the year last year it was create 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 like we have a quote every year and this year it's hey where's God like we like (laughs) so I think that's the quote I'll go with but um yeah I think that's what really speaking to me now is just to show up where I'm wanted. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's going to be the new, that's going to be my new mantra. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, Naomi, want to kick it off with some of the, so we have some fun, like girl talk, random questions, and you can answer whatever you feel comfortable. It's just like silly and fun. If you don't want to answer it, you don't have to. <laughs> So, oh, what was the first party you attended in Hollywood? First party? Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. What was it? It was like a party with a bunch of celebrities at a karaoke in Koreatown, a karaoke-like party. It was so strange for me because I'm from the South. Oh. And going to a karaoke, it's just a bunch of people, like, singing. <laughs> not great but karaoke in LA is like no joke it's like the best singers in the world and I was like wait are we auditioning right now like I didn't (laughs) want to go up because I am not a singer (laughs) (laughs) oh god yeah they put on a whole show huh (laughs) oh my god it was like full dance routines with their karaoke and I was like I'm not going and there's no way like, yeah, I'm not going to go a thing. devil for- went down to Georgia right now <laughs> uh, Brian, this isn't on the list it just popped in my head because I love hearing people's stories on this how did you and your husband meet oh my god mm. it's so cliche he was in my acting class and oh. I remember, here's some juicy, juicy tidbit. I remember, he's going to kill me. He's going to kill me right now. But he was doing a scene and it was a love scene and they were naked on stage. And it was the first class I went to. And I was like, what kind of class is this? You know? (laughs) And I saw him and he was so handsome. And here's the thing. 
as a sex and love addict, you would think like I have a lot of partners or I do a lot of one night stands. That's not my deal. Um, I would have like multiple partners and boyfriends and stuff. But uh, yeah, when I met him, I, if I like you, you would never know. I'm like, you would never see how I feel. And so one day he was near me in class and I was like, he walked by me and he touched my head, which was really strange. Cause we said like two words to each other. And he was like, how are you? And I'm like, I'm okay. And then he was walking past me and I grabbed his arm and I pulled his hand, arm down. And I whispered in his ear. I was like, do you have a girlfriend? And he like stood up and looked at me cause he's really tall. And he was like, no. And I <laughs> pulled him down again. Cause I was sitting down and I said, do you want to go on a date with me? And he like looked at me and he's like, yes. And I <laughs> Okay, fine, but you have to call me and ask and plan it oh or whatever. My gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and ask. <laughs> yeah, and we've been together ever ever since. That was sixteen years ago. And oh, wow. wow. Are you are you a Scorpio? No, I'm a Taurus. Oh, okay. I was like, is she a water sign? I just had to ask. I'm the opposite of Scorpio, though. We're like seven at we're parallel to oh. each other. Yeah. Naomi is a Scorpio. <laughs> so. Scorpio. Scorpio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's how we what? met in acting class. That's I so love cute. it. So your husband, uh, he works in the industry too? Yes, he was an actor and now he mostly directs and produces and writes. So he's, yeah, he's still in the business, but he's. So um, would you guys ever work on a project together? Oh, we have. We worked on three. We produced three movies together, and he just directed me in a Lifetime movie. And yeah, we work together all the time, and we produce the yeah. podcast together. We're just like we just fit really well. Our our production company is called Give and Take Productions because we know each other's like strengths and weaknesses, and we give and yeah. take. So it just works really well with, between us. I'm lucky. Actually, it's a catchy name. <laughs> Oh, hey. <laughs> um, oh, what is the funniest rumor you heard about yourself? Oh my God, the funniest rumor I heard that I was together with Tom Felton. We shot a TV show together called Murder in the First on TNT. And all the fans, they loved, you know, Harry Potter fans love Tom Felton. And they all said, like, I was trying to steal him and stuff. And I was like, we were just co-stars. Like, I still get, I still get DMs, like, were you with him? He's my boyfriend from, oh, my God. And so that's the one I'm like, I never was with him. Like, we work together. Like, calm down. I'm married. It's okay. Like, so, <laughs> that's the one I hear. Oh, yeah. Harry Potter has some diehard fans. <laughs> oh, they are. They are no joke. You do not mess with them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, okay, just to close it off, this is our signature question that we ask. And that is, never have I ever, like, what have you never done? Oh, this is a good one because it ties to the book. Never have I ever had a one night stand. Oh, wow. Very nice. Is that's, you know, you know that uh, I wasn't expecting that because I was like, with the, the love and sex addiction, I was like, oh, like that, that could be multiple of them. Just thinking yeah. ahead, talking, but like in a way that people wouldn't expect that for someone who was a love and sex addict, right? Yeah. Was yeah, and that's what I wanna break. I wanna break the barriers of what people perceive as the disease and what you know, what a love addict means and what a sex addict means. And I think the book really like puts it out there of like, if you have this problem, how you can get help, what has helped me and people I know, and that it's not just cookie cutter. Like we have sex with a bunch of people. It's not like that. It's very, you know, emotional and being attached to people you shouldn't be and holding on to relationships that don't work anymore and not showing up for yourself or, cheating because you're getting too intimate with your partners so you look outside to to fit like not be so intimate so yeah that's a big one people never think I'm gonna say yeah because I I was like shocked at that response I was like what 
you know, because I do, I still need to learn more about what this addiction is. And I'm really excited to read your book. Thank you so much for being here, Brianne. We really love having you. you. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice to meet you guys. I hope you have a lovely day. <laughs> Rest you your day. too. Have a good one. Good Bye. luck. Bye. Bye. Well, that was awesome. She's amazing. I loved hearing all her stories. Like she was just, I, I don't even know what to say because I was so speechless at times, just listening to her. How did you I like, feel? I like how she's a uh, bring perspective to, uh, to what the, um, addiction is like because you know people who aren't experiencing that or going through it we have like an image of it in our heads of what it is because of Hollywood and what we've seen on TV yeah. or maybe like seen in magazines but nobody knows the the true uh experience like someone who's going through it and can help educate as well as entertain you know what I'm saying you know she's creating yeah. a book that's going to educate people on on the addiction it. Yeah, while, you know, keeping them engaged and entertained. And that's, I think that's pretty impressive. I, um, like, I really was shocked at her last last answer because I wasn't expecting that. Like, were you expecting that? Because I wasn't expecting that just knowing someone who has that type of addiction would never have had a one night stand. Yeah, I, that, that was surprising to me as well. Because, you know, like I said, we have an idea in our head. Our head yeah. <laughs> What do we know? And uh, yeah, I would assume that it would just be a lot of one night stands, but apparently that's mm. inaccurate. I you know. love her confidence though about like her husband, like how she just straight up asked him out. I want that confidence. Like if anything, like, I pulled him down, <laughs> yep, grabbed him. You actually left when she was talking about this, but she was talking about her podcast and mm. she was saying that people call in or she interviews people and they tell her a secret that they've never told anyone. And then they, she'll change the name of the person. So no one's revealed. Right. So right. That's a very catchy, like unique concept. That's so interesting. That, so interesting. I just, I love her energy. And I just, I think, I don't know. I, she was just so honest and authentic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. You can definitely, I was, uh, definitely see that a lot of stuff that's in that book is gonna be it's like a tell-all but you know with the name I can't can't wait to read it yeah (laughs) so guys thank you for joining us for beauty cocktails and girl talk and stay tuned for more